Put your hands together for Jesus as we welcome him for his testimony. Oh, go ahead and celebrate Jesus. This is a wonderful and a glorious testimony. You're welcome, sir. Please tell us your name again and what God did for you. My name is Damusa Abba. Um, I have come to testify on behalf of my wife, Elizabeth Abba, of what happened on Wednesday last week. Three weeks ago, I traveled home with her for the death of my mother's burial. Uh, after eight days prayer, according to Islamic rite, she came back to Abuja. I remained behind. I was arranging for 40 days prayer. So I came back on Monday. The Monday evening, the father, my father-in-law called me. He called the wife and asked whether I have come back to Abuja. I heard and I said yes. So I told him, because I was supposed to see him on Sunday, last Sunday, I was not able to go there. So I told him, Shoja, I will call you tomorrow. My phone is down to explain to you why I was not able to come. So, on Sunday evening, Monday evening, we were eating. Then he called. He was talking. At that point, it was about to rain. And then the network was not clear. So he told my wife, he could not hear you very well, that you should call back tomorrow morning. Then, in the morning, my wife called him. The junior sister in the compound picked the call to go and give him. And he was calling, Daddy, Daddy. Until want to talk to you. Daddy, daddy, until want to talk to you. He was not responding. So my wife became worried that the dream he had in the night was not good. Why is the father not responding? That every day the father come out of the compound 5.30. So by 6 o'clock, if he's not responding to a call, something is wrong. I encouraged her. I said, no, maybe he went to ease himself. He said no. So he called back again. The little girl was still saying, auntie, I'm calling daddy. He has not woken up. So let me give to my mom to go and call, wake him up. So as we were waiting, she called again and the junior sister was crying that the father is dead. So I hold, held on to my wife and con trying to console him, console her. So we were there till in the evening. Then I told her to prepare to go back tomorrow morning, being Tuesday. So she called on the prophet he said, the prophet will pray for me before I leave. She called the prophet once. The prophet did not pick. She called the second time. The prophet did not pick. He started praying. He said, God, let the prophet pick my call. Let the prophet pray for me. I said, don't worry. The prophet, maybe she is busy. He will pick your call. So as we were talking, the prophet called her. Then he told the prophet, my father died this morning. And I want to go home tomorrow morning. Please, I want you to pray for me before I leave. So the prophet prayed for her. Then, and asked her that if she gets home, she should call him so that he pray for her again. So Wednesday morning, I accompanied her to the park. They entered the 18-seater bus. She was sitting on the first row at the back of the driver. And the vehicle took, took off very early. Before 12 o'clock, they were at Lokoja. So when she called me, I said, thank God, before 2 o'clock, you will be home. So they left Lokoya through Ajaokuta, through Itobe. Then, immediately, there was one small village they called Ajegu. Immediately after that village, there were heavy young boys, numbering up to 15, by the roadside. And each person was carrying gun. They did not talk to them. As the driver was still going, five other heavy boys came out of the bush to the road. Then the driver marched automatic brakes. He said the vehicle almost fall. And only she was shouting blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. Because majority of the passengers are Muslims and they were fasting. So some of them were even sleeping. As he was shouting blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, they woke up. So the driver stopped. When these five people came, the other 15 from behind came. Then they held on the driver, dragged him down. So my wife went on her knee. At the first, that first roll, she knelt down and started praying and said, God of oh, prophet, Sonny, save me from this trap. Save me from what I'm seeing now. Only you can save me. She was praying. So the people opened the door, dragged out the other 17 passengers. All of them, they dragged them out, collected their phone. My wife was still praying. 
then collected their money and asked two women who were carrying little baby to go back to the bus. So the two women came in. Then every other passengers, including the driver, they took them to the bush. So my wife was still praying, praying. It was for over one hour, then police came. So it was a, when the police came, they told my wife they, that my wife now raised up her head. So the other two women said, we're telling the police that they went this direction. So the police said they should wait. They enter into the bush. While in the bush, for over two hours, the police were there. Then the driver and two other men ran through another place and came out. They wounded the driver at this place. So when the driver came, the police, they asked him to wait. The police waited oh, till in the evening. They couldn't locate anybody. Then they came, they asked them to go to a police station and they'll take their statement. So my wife and these uh, five other persons, they went to the station, took their statement. They left that spot after seven in the evening. So until they left, they never discovered any of these people. None of them. They have taken them. So that was how my wife escaped this. If not... So if not for the prayer of man of God, by now I would have been rallying around to see how I can pay ransom for my wife to come out of the kidnappers and then how can I go for the burial of my father-in-law. So church, I want you to help me thank the man of God for what him and his God has done in my life and in the life of my wife. So my wife has directed me to come and say, man of God, thank you very much. Thank you, God. Thank you for this service that I cannot explain what has happened. How they discovered, uh, uh, about 15 of them enter the vehicle, drag everybody down, and they never see her. That is how she escaped. She was not touched. <laughs> Did you hear that? They didn't see her. <laughs> thank God. Go ahead and thank God. Thank God. Give praise to Jesus Christ. That's a God will bless you this morning. Your enemy will never see you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Wave your hands to Jesus.